Hello, my name is Andy from SolidTech. I'm going to show you today how to uh, apply decals to a SolidWorks part. Uh, first of all, if you come over to the right hand side, you have Appearance Scenes and Decals tab. We open that up. Uh, we've got Appearances, Scenes and Decals. SolidWorks has its own custom decals saved in here. Now, you're more than likely not going to use some of these or most of these. So, uh, you're going to want to use your own custom decals. So, what you need to do first is drag in one of these decals onto the, the face that you want to apply your decal to. Then, you can browse and find the decal that you want to use. So, my one is on the desktop. Uh, the solid text JPEG image. So, if I just select that, I'll just also show you all the, the files that you can use, the file types you can use for these daggles. So select this one. So my solid tech logos come in there. And then that's my image that I've chosen a little preview of the daggle. The other tabs are mapping and elimination. I, I'll just go into mapping. So this is the face that you've chosen to put it on. You can change that by just clearing the selection and choosing a different face. You can move the decal about, uh, so it's 10 mil right in the center point. You can move it left and right and up and down. I'll just leave it in the center. Uh, this as fixed aspect ratio will make sure that the, the image stays in proportion, so that from the height to the width. You can turn that off if you want, uh, and you can also say you can also say fit to width, so the image fits to the width. Okay. You can see it slightly cuts this off, uh, so you could move it down, but you could also say, say fit to height, okay. If we just turn these back off again, you can also change the, the width and the height manually, so you can choose what what size these, this image is, okay, so that's it moving up and down. So I'm just going to fit it to the width and the height, okay. You can mirror this image horizontally and vertically, so you can change things like that. Alright, I'm just going to leave it the way it was. The other tab is illumination. That's to do with the way the light uh, affects this image. So you can change these settings. I find that using the underlying appearance uh, is generally what good enough for what you need. So I'll just turn that on. And you can see how it changes the image. Okay, what we still have is this. It looks creamy on this graphics area. It's that. It's the white background of the image. All right. Now I don't really want that. I would prefer that it showed the same appearance on this face as if it as if this these letters were transferred onto it. Okay. So what we can do is go back to the image tab here, and we're given this mask image option. So there's a couple of different ones. I'll just demonstrate these now. So you have the selective color mask. I'll just scroll down. And we've got this eye drop tool. Alright. So if we take that, what we're wanting to do is select that white area around the image and remove it. Now the common mistake is to try and do it on the, the graphics area. It won't allow you. What you need to do is do it in this preview window. So we can see the little eye drop tool and we can select that. Alright, it looks good in the preview window, but if you actually look at it in the graphics area, it's quite it's quite fuzzy. Alright, you can keep clicking and we'll see them showing the different shades of white down here. Right, so you can keep clicking and it'll remove more and more every time. But you only have a like 12 goes and it's still going to end up fuzzy. So there's this other option which I would use is the image mask file. Okay. And what it's looking for is an image, a black and white image of the same thing, the same the same decal. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is open up paint here. I'll just I, this is what I've done earlier. So I'll just close that down a wee second and put the paint again. All 
Live. Um, just open that deco that we're using, so this solid tech. I word so it's it's red and white as it stands at the moment. So what I can do to turn black and white is file save as other formats and choose uh, to change it to monochrome bitmap. I'm just going to save that to my desktop again and let's save it as B W for black and white. And press save. It'll warn you about the quality being reduced slightly, so we can press continue. That back down, and now I want to navigate to that black and white solid tech image. Okay, so I can open that up. So we can see it's masked it, right, but it's masked it the wrong way around. We want to keep the letters and remove the, the white background. So we can do that by going to the invert mask uh, option. Alright, and now we've got that nice, clean, crisp image. So I can say OK to that. So just also we'll cover how you can apply an appearance to this part. So if we go on, go to this tab here and then go to our appearances, we expand that down with all these different options, all the different types of material. So you might want to apply a plastic and uh, let's say satin, satin finish. And we can choose this white one. So we just drag it from the palette over onto the part. And this is, you've only got one chance to select what you want to do. Otherwise, you'll have to drag it in again. So this is uh, applying it to the face only, the feature, the body, or the part. Now the body and the part are the same in this at the moment because there's only one body. But I'm going to select a uh, and apply it to the whole part. And as we can see now, our decal is on that. And it looks quite good. There is another option for applying a decal, which will give it a more 3D look, a bit more embossed. I'll just switch to this other part uh, to show that. So what we can do here is apply an um, appearance first, so we'll apply this same appearance as before and let's just apply it to the face this time then we need to go to this tab and edit that appearance ok, so I'm just right clicking on that and selecting edit appearance then we need to go to advanced, the advanced tab and choose the browse for image, so again I'm going to choose my solid tech uh, JPEG. So because it's a JPEG, SOLIDWORKS is looking for these .p2m files. You need to say all files and choose this solid tech uh, image file. So we'll open that and SOLIDWORKS wants to then convert your JPEG into an appearance file. So we can say yes, do so. So we'll just save that out. Uh, you want to make it visible, yes. And then we can see it's all mapped basically like a wallpaper. So we can go to the mapping because that's what needs to be changed. And let's uh, fit height and width. And also we need to change this from automatic to surface. Okay, and we can see it's the wrong way around. We could rotate it around. 180, or we could just merge both ways. All right, so that's that. Again, you've got your elimination. Now, because this is an appearance that we're creating, we can't use the appearance underlying appearance because this is the appearance. So you want to think about setting up your the different types of illumination, playing around with them, how they how they look with your image. So we've done them that there. The other thing we can do is we can choose a surface finish. So this is called a bump map. So what it does is give that 3D look. So we choose from a file and it's going to bring in the SOLIDWORKS default. So we can browse for that black and white image again. Open that. And Okay, 
sorted itself out. Okay, just took a little while. Okay, and what that does is, if we look at that, it gives it a more three-dimensional embossed look. Okay, just to make it look that wee bit more better, it saves you, saves you having to do that extrude with the text uh, sketch. I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you for listening.